Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, guys. It's been a very long time. But, as promised in the last video, we're attempting to go to the moon this time. And I've actually been having some real struggles with this. Uh, designing a vehicle with our lackluster tech, let's put it that way. We haven't gone through the tech tree too far. Not far enough to get big enough rockets to really get there effectively. Although... The first stage uh, RD rockets from the from the last episode were actually really nice. They have a lot of thrust, and you'll see here in a bit that I've used a ton of them to design this rocket. And it's actually for the first time a rocket that's too big to even fit in the VAB. It's the Nero Seven. It barely touches the top there, but our engines are just stuffed into the ground here. Luckily, we've got hangar extenders. Hit that. And we'll see, they're not actually stuck in the ground. This here is, like I said, the Nero 7. Supposed to land a Kerbal on the moon. Hopefully, if everything goes correctly. Not not a lot of uh, not a lot of room for uh, for mistakes in this rocket. I pumped as much Delta V as I possibly could out of this. 19,000 meters per second. And I'll talk about it here in a little bit. Notice, uh, before we even are able to launch this, our mass is 4,424.514 tons, and our launch pad is only able to hold 800 tons. So that's a problem right out of the bat. And I'll be dealing with that later either by buying the upgraded launch, ta uh, launch pad, that's what I meant to say, or seeing if we can launch this from the runway, if that'll destroy the runway too, who knows. Wait, okay, inside this fairing, this is the small part of the rocket that will land on the moon and then go back into moon orbit and dock with this. I'll talk about these two at the same time. This is going to, this smaller part here is going to take us from Earth orbit to the moon orbit. And it will detach this smaller lander, which will land on the moon and return to dock with this in lunar orbit. And at that at which point this bottom section of the small part will actually completely detach and it'll just be this small part here docked to this bigger part here and this will take us back to earth hopefully to re-enter and that part i'm actually very scared about i have not re-entered anything from the lunar orbit to earth not once and we got the well, actually, I should probably talk about the engine. The first engine is the RL-10 AC series. And then the stage is going to take us to the moon and back are four XLR-99s. I chose these. They have pretty low thrust, but they have a rated burn time of 45 minutes. And they can also be reignited 10 times. So I couldn't pass that up. I just slapped four of them on there. Now this second stage is what's going to push us out of the atmosphere into orbit, at least very close to it, for this stage to finish up. And it's five times the RD-253s, and zoom in and take a look at them here. Five of these big boys, and these, yeah, they have a thrust of 1600 kilonewtons, which is insane. Underneath this is what's going to take us off the launch pad into the upper atmosphere. <laughs> and, well, as you see up here, 45, 45 RD-23s. Here, let me move this up. Look at this. This is insane. I very much predict at least one or a few of these engines failing, which might result in a complete mission failure, if it does. It's it's just just looking at this, I, I I see so many things that can possibly go wrong, so many things. But what we're gonna do is try. Well, actually, you know, first I should probably fix my goddamn staging. Yeah, <laughs> that would that would be fail us right away. So I'm gonna fix the staging, and then we're gonna either skip to when the launch pad is uh, upgraded, which will cost a lot of money, I presume, or skip to being on the on the runway see if I can launch this from there but I'll catch you guys there alright so Kerbal construction time did kinda of mess up the upgrade of this 
Uh, it was a, it cost a million funds to upgrade from the level two to level three launch pad, and I paid the money and it waited the time, but it didn't upgrade to level three. And ever since then, it said it was already upgrading, even though it wasn't anymore and didn't upgrade. So with that glitch, I went back into the files here, and I just changed the launch pad to the level three launch pad, and it still took the million funds out of our funds. So no problem there, loaded it back up and everything is working. The facility is still low level pretty much everywhere else. The launch pad got level three so I can fit this giant rocket on it. And that rocket is going to take 184 days to build. All right, so we're bringing our inclination down close to zero once again. And unfortunately, unless we wait, might have to wait until 1961, several weeks, in order to get the inclination close to zero during the daytime hours. The way it's looking right now is that we're going to have a night launch, and I guess that that is all right. It's all right. Bring this all the way down to zero. See how far down we get. Okay, we're at our launch window right now. I've done some testing with the upper stage engines, but <sighs> the sheer a total of 50 RD engines on this on this rocket. 50. The chances of it of this mission failing are astronomical. Pun intended. We have a pilot and a scientist. They're both level one. Here is the moment of truth. We're bringing out the Nero 7 to the launch pad. See if it's even, even able to hold itself up. All right, here we go. I just gotta double check something. There we go, got it right. Got the right one. Open terminal. List files. Okay, switch to zero. List files. There we go. Run soar three. All right, that is our script for taking off. I forgot to put it in. Um, got to put it inside of the the rocket before we built it. But I'm able to just plop it in there, right there. And actually, to my surprise, we're not wobbling on the launch pad at all. Which is amazing. I'm not sure how well you can see this. <laughs> all right. This is the moment of truth. We are igniting all 45 of those engines. All right now I'm only at 8 frames per second, let's see how that drops. Oh my ears! Oh fuck! Oh that hurt my ears, here we go. This is not good. <laughs> Finally, the engines have cut off. It looks like several of them had some fuel issues where they still have fuel left. And unfortunately it was all on one side. So it put us in a spin here. I cut the engine as soon as I saw it happening. Ah, oh, but we're just gonna have to wait for this to slowly spin and put us right back on track. This is this is all right. This is all right because it's going to oh, it's going to spin back around, so we're pointing the right direction. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, we're high enough in the atmosphere where I don't think we're even noticing any drag whatsoever by doing this. We only had one engine failure for those first 45. I'm impressed with that. What I'm gonna do is decouple that first stage. Those are very stable. Our periapsis is at negative 285,000 meters. Kicking the RCS to stop us from this oscillation, hopefully. Not really oscillation, just a little kickback from one of the engines shutting down a little bit later. What we're gonna do is we're gonna quick save just to make sure nothing explodes here. We're gonna decouple the second stage. Starting with that fairing. And then the payload fairing. And we are decoupled. See if RCS can bring us back down now. Got plenty of hydrazine for this. Plenty. Got five minutes and 40 seconds till our apoapsis. And see, this space... I don't think we're going to need that much more Delta V. And I think... Um... Using a little bit of this stage just to push us into orbit is within, like I said before, workable parameters. I think we can work around that, but I'm not in t I'm not 100% sure on that. I am 100% sure if that one engine didn't fail, this would have kicked us a little bit closer, if not all the way to a stable orbit, just barely. I like to I like to run these missions not so. Uh, Let's put it this way. I, I, I usually like to have more fuel than needed when I run these missions. Uh, because there is no room for error on this mission. And I think whatever room for error, whatever small amount there was, uh, I have just used with that engine failure. kicked in. All, right, all we need to do is bring our apoapsis above the atmosphere without using too much. Right, we're going to kill our engine and wait till we're exactly at apoapsis to bring our periapsis up one more time. And we can do this because we've got five more ignitions left of these engines. Five more. And that is the exact amount of ignitions that we need to use. So if we ever have to use these engines one extra time, the mission is a failure. We won't be able to get back to Earth. That's the parameters I'm working with right now. It's, it's very stressful. It needs to be perfect. We need to get to the moon at a perfect trajectory, circularize at a perfect trajectory, return from Earth at a perfect trajectory. If we use the ignition one more time than we need to, then... We have to make it back from lunar orbit into into the Earth's atmosphere perfectly from there. There's no correction burn. We lose our correction burn if we use this one extra time than I am going to right now. There we go. We are in orbit. Oh, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> 50 engines, sorry, 56 engines on this. And so far, only one of them have failed. And in the next episode, we are going to be transferring to the moon. And I can't wait, guys. I, I just can't wait. This is going to be incredible for me. I don't think, like, we have landed a small probe on the moon, but in realism overhaul, even in just, you know, messing around with sandbox and stuff, I've never landed a Kerbal on the moon. So this is going to be a first for me. 
and doing it with the lack of tech that I had in 1960 is going to be monumental for me and this series. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.